All right, guys, so today is a very special day. I'm joined by Roland Hall of Allet Mowers. He's been very generous to, get, to give me a, uh, a one of the first looks at the new Allet Sterling mower. So, Roland, thanks for coming out. Um, so tell us, tell us about the, the new Sterling. What makes this special compared to previous generations and why should homeowners consider it? Well, first, thanks for inviting me over. Um, uh, we, myself and Austin follow your channel back in England. Nice. And uh, we really love the content, so I've been really looking forward to coming up and seeing you. So this is going to be hopefully good fun for both of us. So this is um, a new machine that we launched at the end of last year. Um, it's called the Sterling Range. Okay. It's available in two sizes, the Sterling uh, 43 and the Sterling 51. This is a 51, this is a 20 inch machine. Okay. And this is a very important machine for Allet globally. Um, this is a machine that's been in development for two and a half years now um, and really is designed for us to be a quantum step forward um, from a, a, a user perspective. Uh, both for homeowners and for professional users. Mm -hmm. So we're very excited about it. I think it's a machine that um, you know, we tried to tick a lot of boxes with, and I think we've pretty much done that. Now, I noticed that you guys went for, and it's a battery-powered mower, but you also went with the Ego uh, power system. These are very, very common here in the US for blowers, string trimmers, those types of things. It was that part of it you're thinking that people are already in this ecosystem, so it's better for them to go with that? Is that well, it was, I mean, it was certainly part of the, 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 the thought process. I mean, Ego do make fantastic products, mm -hmm. and they're very popular uh, around the world, especially here in the United States. Uh, one of the other constraints we had was simply the supply chain issues that we have globally around the country, I trying gotcha. to get uh, power units and, and batteries and stuff. It's st it still is today hard to get batteries. I'm sure everyone uh, is familiar with that. Mm -hmm. So it was just a system that we felt very comfortable with uh, and we were keen to do something uh, along this sort of level. It's a slightly more premium product and it fits neatly between our professional machines and our entry-level homeowner machines. So. From, from all aspects, we were, we were quite excited to work with them. Okay. And now, so I'm a new homeowner. I buy um, a Sterling, a 51. Um, as far as setup, what are we looking at as far as setup time? Do I take it out of the box? Like, what's, what's involved as far as assembly goes? Well, really, the only thing with regards to assembly is um, well, the two main things, I should say, are the handlebars and then the grass catcher. The grass catcher is very simple as assemble. It's a very light uh, assembly, it's just a cover that goes over the, the frame okay. and the frame gets put together. So that's that's pretty straightforward. I got you. And now as far as, I'm a taller guy, so as far as adjusting the height or, or length, I mean, is, that, is that something that's adjustable to an extent? Well, to come through to some of the features, one of the big features that we wanted to do differently in this is we wanted a more robust and more comfortable handlebar arrangement and this, we feel, works uh, especially well. Okay. Well, once you've got the handlebars and everything in the right position, the actual handles themselves are super nice, and I, I have to say we're really very pleased with this. You obviously have two buttons on the top. Okay. This is for the drive system, and you can use the whole machine with either one hand or both, okay. which is, again is super, super user-friendly. If you're coming to a turn or what have you, you can just hold it with one hand, but, um, and you can adjust the speed. Okay. So it has multiple uh, adjustment on it, um, and again, is super user-friendly from that perspective. Also, and you'll see when you use it, You'll also see to engage the uh, reel or cartridge, whatever cartridge you have, there's a simple button in the middle, you depress, okay. and then you engage with the damn man switch. It has a number of different positions. You're able to, this is just what the position I like to mow in, this is your sort of parking p p position. Okay. I, and the, the handlebars themselves are telescopic, so if I'm putting it away in the garage, and I don't want it to take up too much space. I can just put it away nice and neatly like that. Nice. In mm. this position, all the electronics are cut. So okay. there's no way, if there's a child or something, there's no way anyone can activate the machine in this, in this situation. Okay. We also have a removable key at the back. Uh, and this again works very well from a safety perspective, but the machine is now totally uh, uh, inactive. So one of the big benefits now to the Allet systems are the cartridge systems, right? So you you have, it uh, looks like you have a, um, uh, what is this, an eight blade reel that's in here now? This is a six blade. Six it? blade, okay. All the machines are delivered with six bladed reels. Okay, but now you have a six bladed reel, but then I see a, a, an assortment of other cartridges here. So can we quickly talk through each one of these and what role a, each one of these serve in a homeowner's lawn care program? Well, to start off with, the six-bladed reel is an ideal starting point because basically, you know, anyone that's cutting grass from sort of three quarters of an inches and above sure. is going to really need a six-bladed reel and uh, this machine will cut up to two inches. Mm -hmm. So that gives you tre tremendous flexibility, especially for those coming to reel mowing from rotary because their lawns are going to be three, four inches tall right. and they need the flexibility of this kind of machine to be able to start to bring their height of cut down over time. So that's that's a, a good starting point. The 10-bladed 
reel is is really for cutting uh, lower. We obviously, um, the, the transition area is at three quarters of an inch. Three quarters of an inch and lower, the 10 blade is what we would go for. Sure. It'll cut down to just above an eighth of an inch. Wow. So okay. it's it's a pretty good cartridge. That's about three millimeters. And if you're having an ornamental lawn and obviously grass like yours, that would be the way to go. And you get, a, again, a, a better quality of cut. The next most important cartridge is going to be the Scarifier or Turf Rate cartridge. Okay. This really is a multifaceted cartridge. And this is the cartridge that really probably has got Allet on the map here in the United States more than anything else, especially with professional facilities, the sports stadiums and with landscapers. It obviously can be used for, for turf raking the lawn and picking up leaves and acorns and stuff like that. Right. But fundamentally, we're trying to grow a different kind of lawn. We're trying to get away from chemicals and we're trying mm. to reduce water consumption for grass. Sure. So the removal of thatch is a really key part of that. So the next step in this process would really be the dethatcher. Okay. And this is often overlooked, but we think it's a very important cartridge. It allows you to go much, much deeper, uh, really into the soil where the, the thatch layer is starting to, to degrade. Okay. But you still want to remove that sponge. So that's a very important part of it. It's also very useful if you're uh, overseeding, uh, if you're wanting to top dress, you can really break this, the, the top layer down and, right. and you're able to get um, better penetration of the topsoil and, and all that kind of good stuff. I like it. What's, what about um, this guy here? Here in the south, the, the verticutter especially is very popular. So this is, this is a great cartridge for uh, all the rhizos and stolons that you get with Bermudas and zoysias and what have you. Mm -hmm. So this again forms part of a regular maintenance program. Um, I like to advise people to look at using it about uh, every four or five weeks. It's not necessarily about being f terribly aggressive with it. Sure. But it's a, again a little and often that philosophy is important. Okay. And, and again in conjunction with the, the, the scarifier or turf rake, these vertical blades, it's important to have the turf raking done because you want to have the lawn combed so that the grain is going in the direction you're traveling. Mm -hmm. And then when you come to use these blades, they do much less damage to the leaf. We're trying to grow strong, healthy grass. Mm -hmm. And so that's really critical. The other aspect of this, and this is where we come to with regards to reducing water consumption and, and reducing significantly the need to use chemicals, is by removing the thatch and the, and the debris layer, you take away the environment that your disease and fungus needs to get established in your lawn. Okay. But also, and, and just as importantly, you change the structure of the plant below ground. I, I can see that because I can tell you this year to start out the season, I did verticut the lawn, I did it very aggressively, and the one time that I did it, it it's made a really big difference in just the quality of the turf, how it grew back, how it grew back yeah. in. Um, so it, it's, I can definitely see the benefits uh, to that. And now, as far as uh, one of the things that I, I saw when I was reading through the literature for this on, on your website, is the speed of changing cartridges. So again, a good example, this comes with the six blade. On my lawn, I don't wanna run the 10 blade. What am I looking at as far as doing that? Okay, so, so you're looking at undoing the hinges on either side. Okay. You. Uh, you release the handle from the side position all the way up. Okay. And then the cartridge just pulls out. Nice, nice. And then again, to put it back in, just get the angle right. It slides back in, put the two hinges on, and then pull the handle all the way down so it locks. And it locks in. Well, all right, okay. guys, with the 10 blade in, let's take this thing for a drive. So I'm going to start out with mowing some portions here of the back lawn, and then we'll get to try it on a slope and see how it does. Excited. Let's go. Huh? All right, guys, so I've made a couple of mowing passes. The stripe action looks really good, but again, I am mowing it my way, the way I would normally do it with um, the mower that I, I currently have. So let's see what happens when we use the outlet system. So Roland, as far as from here, um, if I were gonna do this correctly, would I then scarify and verticut? And what, what would you say as far as the sequence goes? Well, we're going to run the uh, scarifier first, just to give the grass a little bit of a comb. Okay. Probably run it once or twice on these same stripes. Okay. And then we'll run the verticutter. Again, not too aggressive. And then we normally put the reel back in just to have a tidy up finishing pass. Very good, so let's do that, guys. So we're gonna scarify, verticut, and then we'll run it again with a 10 blade reel. And you see what the stripes currently look like now? Let's give it another, uh, let's give it the outlet treatment and see what kind of results we get. Alrighty, 
guys. So my first, you saw the three scarifying passes are done. It's definitely pulled up um, some of the runners, some of the stolens, and you can see just from three passes, all the debris that has come out of that. So that's really typical, um, that's Roland? Absolutely typical, yeah. For someone that's just the first time they're and, doing this. And yeah. you know, at the moment, we're really just tickling it. You know, we have a long way to go. So to really get this thatch free, there's about a month's worth of, of scarifying. When I say that, I'm talking about sort of anything from 15, 18, 20 passes. It can be quite a lot to get down to the soil. Sure. This is, this is all the material that we want to have gone. OK, very cool. So now we'll swap to the vertica. The vertica. All right, guys, so the verticutting pass is all done. And you can tell that definitely cleaned up quite a bit. Even more debris has come out. Again, this is just three, three passes on the lawn. So look at all that, all that material. Very cool. Okay, so at this point, Roland, we would go back to the 10 blade. We'd go back to the 10 blade. Okay. And then we put a clean up. Uh, clean up cut on it. Okay. Well, guys, I think the results kind of speak for themselves. Uh, you know, the the one um, challenge or thing I've always been afraid of when it comes to scarifying is that it rips up the stones and kind of makes a big mess of the lawn. But this system, as far as the scarifying, the verticutting to, to then to then chop them up and then a cleanup pass, uh, yeah, I mean that's that's nice. That's nice and uh, <laughs> that's very nice and clean. I dig it. I like it. All right, so we've covered the, the back lawn. Um, let's go and put this on a slope and see how it does. Again, you guys can see, look at the amount of material that just came out of three passes. Take a look at that. So you guys saw it's three passes um, back and forth. This is an initial cut and then a scarify and then verticutting and then a cleanup pass. And you can see the differences in the clippings, right? So if we dig in here a bit more, you see all the, the, the nasty stuff that's more towards the bottom that came out of the scarifying and verticutting and then Again, some nice grass clippings that come off the, the last mow. So very nice. It does a very good job cutting. Stripe action is on point. So let's take it now on a slope, see how it does. All right, guys, so we saw how the mower did on the back lawn. Really impressed, did a really good job. The different cartridge systems um, are very, very cool. Now for the challenging part, a slope, right? One of the questions you guys always have about real mowers are how do they do on a slope? I don't really have trouble um, real mowing a slope typically, um, and I have no, you know, no, no reason to believe that the, that the sterling's not gonna do a great job. So we're gonna do our normal thing, where I'll do a trim pass, and then we'll make a couple of passes diagonally, which is how I normally mow, and then a couple of passes lengthwise. So let's get started. Well, guys, it passes the stripe action test. The cut, the cut looks really good. I gotta, I gotta say, it, it looks really good. You guys can see uh, from video from what's not cut and what is cut. Overall, very nice. Um, it is a lighter unit than what I'm used to, so there's a little more work as far as keeping it in line. But handles the slope just fine. And keep in mind too, guys, uh, the time of day when I normally mow this lawn is earlier in the morning when there's a bit of dew on the lawn. And believe it or not, the mower tends to work. In my case, anyway, it tends to work a bit better when the grass is just a slightly damp, whereas now it's fairly dry, so it's gonna slide around a bit more. So very, very impressed, very impressed. So yeah, so rolling overall, I gotta admit, man, it's a, it's, it's a pretty cool unit. I get it. I mean, the whole idea behind electric mowing and being able to get out here when it's earlier in the morning and, and mow without disturbing your neighbors is very attractive. The interchanger cartridge system, also very, very cool. And, and as far as the cut goes, I mean, I'm not really, no, I can't, can't say anything wrong with that. It actually looks, uh, looks, looks quite good. So 
Very awesome. So as far as people are learning more about the Sterling, if they wanted to pick one of these units up, uh, what's one of the best ways to go about doing that? Well, there's lots of lots of material on YouTube that you can go and see, uh, sure. both from ours and from other people that are using the machines. There's obviously going to be a lot more material coming out with people buying machines and posting right. online and what have you. Sure. Cool, very good. And um, just to make things also easier, guys, I'll have, I'll get a link from, from um, Roland, I'll have a link in the description of this video where you guys can click to go and pick a unit up if you are, if you're so interested. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm really um, wanting to thank um, Roland from Alec for the opportunity to come out here and, and run the machine and hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it was a little bit longer than my normal content, but I really wanted to give you guys a, you know, a good view of using the cartridge system and really walking through what it's like to use one of these units. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.